Hi, I'm here at the Katie Prairie Conservancy's field office near Brookshire, Texas, and I'm here to show you how to make something called a seed ball. What are seed balls exactly? Well, right here I have a jar of dried seed balls. Seed balls are hard little packages. They're about the size of a marble. And these seed balls are very, very hard. And that's important. The purpose of a seed ball is to protect tender seeds from the mouths of birds and rodents and insects, and also the drying power of winds and the sun until the seeds are ready to germinate. So what we do is we mix four different things. We mix high quality compost, red potter's clay, native uh, coastal prairie seeds, and water. We mix them into a thick batter in a bowl, and we pinch off small amounts of that batter, hand roll them into a ball, set them aside, let them dry out for a couple of days until you get seed balls that are hard and tough like these. You can then take these seed balls and disperse them into a small restoration area and what will happen is over time the rains will come, they'll break the seed ball down slowly, expose the seeds and they will germinate within that seed ball. Now if you're going to use seed balls for restoration Make sure to know that this is really only a technique for small little areas, either in your backyard or if you are helping out with a small restoration area at a local park or some other similar facility. All right, well we're ready to go ahead and make the mixture uh, so that we can roll out our seed balls later on. First thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to sift your compost. A lot of times compost comes with sticks, rocks, and other impurities, they're going to make it very difficult for you to roll your seed balls into nice little uniform packets later on. So what we use here is a screen and we kind of roll the compost back over the screen, back and forth. This is just hardware cloth that we put on lumber. You can get all these materials at any home goods store. Just going to roll this back and forth. You can start to see that there's all sorts of big sticks and rocks and all sorts of things mixed into this compost. The seeds don't really need all those impurities to grow, they just need that compost. So, once we've done a pretty good job of, of sorting out the good from the bad, you can see all those impurities, all the sticks and rocks and other things. We don't need that. All we need is this rich compost to help feed our seeds the nutrients that they need in order to grow successfully. And there you go. Step number one, down. Okay, you're ready for step number two, which is to add the compost, the clay, and the seeds in the right proportions. I've left three shovelfuls of our sifted compost in the wheelbarrow and to those three parts of sifted compost I'm going to add five parts of the red potter's clay. Now I'll tell you that you want to do this outside. It's a very dusty job working with this clay and you don't want it all over your house and you don't want to breathe any more of this than you really have to. Or five, and get a better scoop here, five. Now, to the three parts of compost and the five parts of the red potter's clay, I'm going to add the equivalent of one part or one scoop of these native seeds. We got these from a local ranch, but as, uh, as you know, you can get seeds from local storehouses, uh, places like uh, Native American seed, that kind of thing. The key is to try to get the seeds from as close as uh, your location as you can. So I'm going to add that one part of seed in there and I'm going to mix it up. And what you'll see is there's a lot of dust coming off, yep. This is why you want to do it outside, like I said. But what you'll see in the end is a mixture that is very, very red reddish in color. Doesn't look like any compost in there, in there. but uh, just make sure to uh, don't uh, get tempted to add more of that black compost. It's fine just as it is in these particular proportions. 
Obviously, if you're going to make up a whole batch of the red clay, you'll need uh, more compost and more seeds. But uh, what you'll find, you'll come up with something that looks a little bit like this. Now you're ready to take this material, add it to water, and roll out the seed balls, and that's what we're going to show you next. All right, now that I've made the mixture of the seeds, the red potter's clay, and the compost, I'm ready to make the seed balls. Now this is a very critical part. As you can see, I have some of this dry mixture in this bowl. What you want to do is you want to slowly add water. And that's because you don't want to use any more of this mixture than you have to. If you make it too soupy, you'll have to add more mixture and you just might be using more mixture than you'll be able to make seed balls for that day. So you just want to pour the water in slowly. Just like this. And mix it up each step of the way. Now, Sometimes we tell people to mix it up so that it's a little bit like a thick pancake batter, but really it needs to be thicker than that. And as you can see, I've already added, this is pretty goopy. In fact, it's too goopy to actually make a good seed ball. It's got to stick together into a, into a ball. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right over here. I'll grab some more of my seed ball mixture. I'll go ahead and add some more in to thicken it up a little bit. And this is really a trial and error kind of thing. You'll just have to get a good feel for how much water versus how much mixture to put in so that you get a fairly good consistency. And I think that I've got it right on the second try. This is a pretty good mixture. Let me show you what this looks like. It almost looks dry, but it is moist if you look at it up close. Pretty chunky. It all holds together. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and take a little bit in my hand, about that much. I'm going to roll it into a ball, maybe a little bit big, and I'm going to go ahead and put it here on my drying pan. Now it's important that you'll have enough room to have some of these drying trays or pans available for at least two or three days if you're going to make a bunch of seed balls simply because you're going to need to dry them out uh, in order for them to be successful. If you put them away in a Ziploc bag, um, sometimes the seeds will sprout and uh, that won't make for a very good situation. Or sometimes they'll grow mold or some other, other things. You really need to dry them out before you put them out into the outdoors and let that rain break them down. So as you can see, you can make seed balls pretty quickly. Several years ago, um, here at the Katy Prairie Conservancy, we actually made about 40,000 seed balls for two acres of land on our Nelson Farms Preserve. And that really got a lot of kids involved in the process of restoration. Now we're starting to see Indian grass and a few other things pop up in that area. But what I would suggest is if you're going to use this as a restoration technique, like I said, it should be for very small acreages, the size of a small garden or uh, other similar area. So you can see I can make a whole bunch of seed balls pretty quickly. Now that they're, they're made, I'm going to let them dry out for a couple of days before I try to set them outside. Um, so that's basically how you roll out a seed ball. All right, you've dried your seed balls for two or three days and they're hard and ready to be put outside. If you're not going to use all of your seed balls, make sure to store them in a cool, dry place. Your restoration area should be either mowed down very closely, or if you're going to heavily seed with seed balls, you can actually prepare a seed bed, much like you would do if you were going to actually just broadcast seed. How many seed balls should you put down in your restoration area? The Wildflower Center in Austin suggests that you put down 10 seed balls per square meter. Now, I want you to watch how I put this, the seed balls down. Now, I'm not burying the seed balls, and I'm not watering the seed balls either. These seed balls, like we said earlier, are going to protect those seeds until rainstorms, like the rainstorm that's rolling in today, breaks down that outer coat 
and exposes those seeds. Just leave them on the surface. They'll take care of themselves.